Hi, so welcome. We're gonna paint this light bulb. You won't believe how easy it is. I'm gonna break it down. We're gonna go through all the colors, but painting glass is so much easier than it looks. It's one of my favorite things to do. So let's go. So if you haven't already, start with a color for your background. And I like to use a house paint. It's all mixed up and uniform but you can use whatever color you want. And also I'm doing a color so that you can see what I'm painting. But keep the, if you pick a house paint sample color, keep it on hand because then we can do some backtracking. Now, if you mix the color, that's great practice for mixing. Just sort of remember your, you know, your recipe to make it easier. I'm gonna use white paint, my golden acrylics, my favorite brand, titanium white, to draw it on there. You can use a pencil. You can, I also sometimes like to use chalk because you can wipe it off when you're done. But I don't know, I like the painterly quality when it's kind of loosey goosey. You'll see. Okay, so if you want it, I'm gonna do mine. I want it to be centered. So what I sometimes like to do is find, like measure right here and then, see how I'm measuring that? And then I'm gonna take the same point and measure over there. So that makes it kind of centered. And if you wanna take a screenshot of this, we are, I am not advanced enough to have a two camera set up, but, but it's coming soon. So uh, as you can see, a light bulb is pretty round at the top. And you don't be, you know, super uptight with this because the wonder, the amazing thing about acrylic paints is they're very forgiving. If we don't like it, we can paint over it, you know, and essentially erase. So it's, I might scoot it up a little more. I'm going to make mine go up here some more. But just keep stepping back and looking at it. This is what I teach when I go to talk to little elementary schools, which I'm been lovely. I get invited to do sometimes in Atlanta. Um, as I tell the kids to don't forget to look, and it's sort of like an exercise class when the annoying teacher's like, don't forget to breathe. And it sounds stupid, but then you realize you're not breathing. So very often we're not actually looking. We're letting our brain make an assumption of what something looks like. You know what I mean? So step back and like actually, like look how stupid that looks. <laughs> this part is a lot thicker. And if you need to, measure it. Close one eye and see that that's about that wide. It's almost exactly one and a half times. This is, two, this is actually two times as wide. So I need to either make this narrower or this wider. So if you, you know, just keep stepping back and seeing like why, how, what looks different with my drawing than the thing that I'm painting. See how that made it? And then it gets kind of straight down here. It's not, it does not taper like I had. See how your mind does that? And it's a nice smooth curve. Now, because it bugs me, I'm gonna come back in with my background color and fix this. Okay, it still looks like too much, like it's not thick enough. Let's see. Yeah, it needs to be thicker down here. But see how your brain sometimes thinks that a light bulb looks like this, when it actually doesn't? Now, when you bring in your background color, this is gonna look a lot better. We're just trying to get the basic layout and get it nice, double check over here that it's centered so it doesn't bother you. Okay, here's another thing I did. This brass part is about, is about double. So I need to go from here to here, which means I need to go up to here before my bulb starts popping out. And this is something, the rendering is something that will come with practice. 
But as you can see, mine's kind of wonky. But don't, I, don't be stuck on being exact. And if you don't believe me, go look at the, the beautiful, beautiful free work of somebody like Basquiat, or Bas, I don't know how to pronounce his name. But you know, the one that kind of looks like, uh, it's very useful and free. I think he's so talented. But he is not overly measuring, overly freaking out. It's his freedom and energy, I think, that we all love. So I'm going to get the background color and tidy this up. So then I kind of know. And let some of the white mix in because right there, we're going to already get some of that ethereal feel that the glass has. see how that shape is already looking more more accurate and yours can be a Christmas light bulb it doesn't have to be a traditional light bulb but you know what I like painting you know what I like painting I like painting things that are fading I don't know if y'all have noticed but light bulbs are getting annoyingly weird I don't like fluorescent lights in my house except for when I'm filming for you guys but I like the old school I think you call them incandescent bulbs you know they've all gotten real real fluorescent looking I don't like feeling like I'm at the office okay so you can use this to kind of clean up your drawing and get it where you want it and step back another great way if you're not sure if you feel like your light bulb does not look like a light bulb first of all be nice to your painting. Apologize to your painting. And say, I'm sorry, I was being mean. And then turn it upside down because you can tell what's going on. Okay, my light bulb is not long enough. I don't have a big enough canvas, so I'm gonna just live with that. But if you turn it upside down, you can see the differences. See how long that, that bad boy is? So try that. But what I'm seeing is a little bit of expression in your style. I think it's what makes it fabulous. And would somebody in the comments please tell me how to pronounce the artist? Basquiat? I never did well in languages. I'm a more visual person. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna let this dry. Go use the background color and get pretty close to the edge. In fact, it's okay if you erase some because as long as you have your basic shape, but especially where the glass is, make that line as thin as you can and still see where it is. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. And then we're gonna get started with painting the glass, which you're gonna love, it's so fun. Okay, so you've got your background color. Hopefully it's dry. As usual, like I'm using my three golden acrylic primaries. Sometimes we, we forget to slow down and actually, actually look, right? So if I were to just try to draw this metal hardware from this light bulb, I might just do squiggly lines. But if you really slow down and look, it's a flat cylinder up here. You can either break it down by doing it like paint just that part, or we can sort of draw the whole thing and then fill it in. But, so it's flat, it's this little, you know, band, and then a bump and a curve and a bump and a curve, and these diagonally go downhill from right to left. So they're diagonal lines. And they have all these fabulous shadows that we're gonna go over. And we're gonna make, there's so much good potential for 3D and making it pop in the way that we mix our colors. So I'm gonna mix up a sort of a middle of the road gold and then draw my outline. So I'm gonna start with, let me see if you can see. I'm gonna start with yellow. Remember the blue, the phthalo blue is super juicy, strong pigment. 
So start with like the teeny tiniest amount. I'm talking a speck and you'll see because it goes really far. And you'll, this is a trial and error kind of practice thing where like I've, I put too much. I tried to go minuscule and I put too much. So I'm gonna have to put some more yellow to make sort of a neutral, neutrally gold. So if you mixed all three of your primaries together, you would get a color that looked black. That's a pure neutral. So everything in between is where you get all your other colors. So I'm getting there. I'm gonna do a little teeny bit more. So because, well, I have some basic color mixing classes on different videos. So if you feel like you don't quite have the hang of this, basically you're putting enough purple in your yellow until it turns kind of a dark, deep gold. And purple is made of blue and red. So you're just putting, keep adding purple until it gets more toned down, until it gets to be a deep color like this. And it can be frustrating if you put too much blue. So be nice to yourself, be nice to your art. So I'm gonna start, I think it starts right about here where that very top lip is, and we'll put all the highlights and everything in after. And then it's sort of a straight, and then it goes across. So I've got, we've drawn that first little section. And if you, you might wanna do it like this. So then there's a bump, and a curve, and a bump. And it's pretty straight. It doesn't really taper. And that one kind of ends on a bump. And let's go all the way over here. And see how that one, see that one ends on a bump right there on this side, it's more of a flat because those are lower. So basically this bump connects to that line. Does that make sense? So this bump is the highlight. It goes all the way over there and that bump. So it's not super steep. But basically we can see three protruding, um, gosh, I don't know what to call those things. And then we have this area So this one goes up and the bump is there. And this is why we have the background color because we can always go back in and kind of erase and touch up that thing. So, wait, let me turn my AC on, it's hot in here. I always forget to do that. Okay, so then we're gonna draw this part. I don't know what you call it. I have no idea, and it has a little, it's got a little more of a rose gold kind of pink tone to it, so add a little more of your magenta, and maybe a touch of white, just to tint it, just to separate. So that comes down here. So, I've been doing this, you know, 30, 40 years, so it's funny to me how people will be like, I tried painting, I'm terrible. I'm like, well, how, much, how long did you try? And they're like, oh, I did it once. I mean, do you think there's anything that anybody does in one try and totally masters it? No, you gotta practice. So if you feel like, um, I don't know that my rendering is all that great right here. What I'm saying is go easy on yourself because doing, practicing is how you learn. Then let's do that little sticky downy nipple thing and you'll get to see, use all three colors close to equal to make something that looks like black. I never use black. I love to use these three and just make a pure neutral. 
because then when you add white, you make these amazing grays. So all three of them make that color. And let's put, he looks like he, You can also use, um, you can, if you want to learn how lines and shapes, etc., work, you can try tracing, you know, drawing over something and then you, it just makes you slow down and actually look. Everything is shape and line. You can absolutely draw anything. But the more our brain thinks it knows what it looks like, it kind of messes us up. Mine looks a little purple. But I don't really mind it. I'm going to leave it. That's like an acting choice, right? And is it centered? Uh, I don't know. Okay, now I'm gonna clean my brush, and we're gonna I'm gonna go in and do sort of this medium tone gold, and then we'll do the shadows, and then we'll do the highlights. So that medium tone is closer to the one we mixed it up, you know, to draw with but I'm gonna make it even a little more neutral. So I'm gonna add a little more blue, a little more magenta. Basically, I'm gonna to tone it down and then I'm gonna add some white. And if you're trying to match a color, this is great practice. Just take, rip out a magazine ad and practice mixing the colors. And if you're not sure if your color is close, then you just dab some, right? on there nailed it um and that takes practice but you guys will get it and these colors don't make mud which is why i love them so much so i'm doing most of this area and then let's see that middle area there So if you really, so your mind might be like, oh, it's a golden color and just make it one color. That's why it looks flat. But pay attention, that's almost black, that shadow. And look how, that's almost white, that highlight. There's, if you slow down and put the variety that exists, if you slow down and look at it, you're gonna be happier with how realistic your painting looks. So I'm gonna use that purple, that neutral down here and do some shadows. So if you look right there, there's a dark shadow that goes like this. And it gets a little thinner over here. And then there's a line that goes along that ridge. Kind of. And then see, look, there's a little, there's a shadow over there and then it repeats all the way down to the end. So just keep looking at the image. And keep blending. And then there's one over here. Now, Here's something I'm very guilty of. I will get a little lazy and do the same shadow color. Even though it's a lot darker over here, it's a little more purple here, it's a little bit lighter here. So keep, you know, looking and actually changing the color up because that's what happens in the real world. And I will sometimes get lazy and just do what I just did and be like, psh, psh, psh. So then let's add a bunch of white and make it a little, for your highlight, if you change the temperature, which means make it warmer or cooler for highlights and shadows, you're gonna get a lot more push-pull. So now I'm taking some of, a little bit of that yellow, a lot of white, a touch of yellow, and put even more white. Make yourself a really nice, very pale for the highlight. So the difference between the highlights and the shadows are what make it jump out at you. So you see how it's like highlight, highlight, highlight? 
There's one on the ridge, there's one under. And I believe if you look closely, there's one along this lip. It might not be quite as bright. And then there's one over here. And then see there, so look right here, there's that dark shadow. There's a little kind of self shadow, not a full highlight, but somewhere in between. It's just a matter of slowing down and not letting your brain tell you what you think it looks like. And there's a little one down there. So you just find all the different colors and there's a little surprise highlight down here. And it's so interesting to me how sometimes I lose objectivity. Sometimes I, while I'm painting, I'm like, oh my God, those look like crap. And then I step back or I come in the studio the next day and I'm like, oh, and I see it kind of with fresh eyes. So try to catch yourself if you are somebody who tends to be critical and don't. Or you know what, find some things you like about your painting. Okay, there's also a little shadow that runs along this very last ridge separating it from that. But it looks like it's it's lighter. It's just, it's not quite our full neutral. And sometimes if an area like that in the photo, that looks very flat to me. This, I don't know, I want to call it a nipple. I don't know what, I don't know what that is. But sometimes I will add a highlight to something, even if it's not there, just because I feel like it looks a little flat. So I'm mixing up these three colors and then I'm gonna add a little white. What you think about that? Okay. I need to keep adding more shadows over here, but what I want to do is slightly change the, the tone of my shadow. So I'm going to make it a little bluer. Like these are kind of purple. So I want to make the one over here just stand out a little. See how they're, see how they're a little bluer than those are purple? And it's okay to let a little and you know like let some color come through even though there might not be blue and I do this I when I'm working on a piece I will I will get lazy and want to just fill it in go slow and look and see where the highlights are because like right here on the edge there's actually a shadow a highlight and then a deep shadow and you can just go in every little spot. And I've also missed, there's another highlight that's really gonna have an impact right here. And see how that's warmer? That's a little bit yellower. This one that we did. I'm just gonna touch that one up. The one over here, I think it's a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna keep it yellow but I'm adding a touch of blue to make it a little bit cooler than this highlight. So see, I mean, it's not a ton. Like if they were separated, you couldn't see it. But I think you're gonna be able to tell. And it's kind of split around. And then I think I'm kind of missing. So then there's a little highlight here that's not quite as bright. And then there's a lighter area. 
Okay, so that got too highlighty, and I need to go back to. Now I think it's looking too highlighted, so I'm gonna mix that first yellow, which was not, I didn't have any white in it, I just kept adding purple or, or magenta and blue until it got toned. Oops, see, look what happened. I put too much blue. So I'm gonna clean my brush and start over to try to make that nice medium gold tone. So I'm gonna take the yellow, and it is so hard, this blue is so powerful. It's so hard not to use too much. Just do a tiny dot. You can always add more. It's easier to add more than to take it out because you can't take it out. And it, it has, I'm telling you, it takes, it takes a long time to learn, but then once you get it, it's like learning a language. You know what I mean? You'll get fluent in it and you'll know what to add. So just keep practicing mixing the colors you want until it will become second nature. And then if you, that takes out a large part. I think one of the biggest frustrations about people who are starting out or art in general is color mixing frustration. If you feel like you're making mud, that's not fun. Because it's like you don't have the, the tools you need. Oh, I think we forgot a little shadow over there. Oh, sorry, it's math. Big old head. All right, now I might have done. So sometimes when I overwork a situation, I will take a little pause. Now let's go and work on the light bulb some. Because that's going to be fun. So, your brain wants to tell you that glass, you, you use white to paint. <laughs> um, but look at the picture. Is that white? It actually looks white up here, but it's actually a shadow, a neutral tone. So I'm gonna take a, a little bit of the background color. I use this house paint sample. It is called Sherwin-Williams. Oh, it's Sherwin-Williams 6219 Rain is the color. If you want to get this exact color. And then I like to use a flat brush to get the the small lines, I think an angled brush would work as well. So I'm gonna put a little, can you see that? And that's the background color. And then I'm going to mix, you know that neutral we had for shadows, that it's all three colors mixed together. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in with and mix it. So that it's a toned down version of the background color. Because really that's what you're seeing. It's the, it's the glass, the thick, the, the glass kind of causing you to see. I don't know how to explain that. I don't even know why I tried. It's sciencey. So it's thicker in some places. In some places, you can't even see it at all. So you don't want to make it the exact same color. Like over here looks to me, looks a little bit darker and a little bit thicker than over there. So I'm going to add a little more. On this side. And you kind of got it left over from when we sketched it out. Sorry, I keep getting my head in there. And remember, we can go back in with our background color. And thin it out, so. Okay, up here, you can still see it, but it gets a little lighter. So I'm gonna add some white, a little more of the background color, because it's, it's, it's varied. And then there's some spots where it looks a little bit lighter. Let's 
The main part for me, the hardest part for me is making it really round. But know that I think the feel of hand drawn is more important than making it photo real. Now this in particular picture does not have enough highlights to suit me. So I printed this one and this is the wonderful thing about, about glass. So see how we've got this highlight that's sort of medium tone. You can see the dark areas. So there's more to play with. Like I am going to put, sorry. So print out, this is what I did. I printed out a bunch of picture of light bulbs because you can, it's your painting. You can make it look however you want. I like having a little more light action. It's kind of fun, the light, the reflections usually just imitate a light fixture. So you could put like, and then I'll take the, the background paint to soften the edges, make it a little more. And look, I like, see up here, it's very dark and very sharp and thin. So I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna make a really gray neutral, which is all three, yellow, phthalo blue, and magenta. Mix them until, you know, you can tell when you're getting more neutral. If it's too, what you do, if it's too green, you put more red. If it's too yellow, you put more purple. And you're like, wait, we don't have purple. You do, you put the other two opposites because blue and red makes purple. So I'm gonna put a dark, that might be too dark. And then I'm gonna put a little dark in here. And a little. Mm, that brush is not new enough. Oh, I can go back with the color and make that thinner. Now, while I have this super neutral color, come in and do the filaments. We are really, I think it is actually called the filament. The part that, now this you wanna make not too, I wanna make it really thin, because you don't want it to take away. That's almost like pencil thin, I think. And there's a little bit of red in there. Over here. Okay. Now I'm still gonna come in with my flat brush. And get, and use some of the background. Like that to me is to, um, the transition was not quite smooth enough. So while it's still wet, I'm gonna go in with the background color and make that a little bit thinner on the inside and the out. Because it is very, I keep stopping and you know stepping back and looking because you, sometimes you get kind of carried away and make the lines too thick or too thin, but you can just keep playing with it. Sorry, I get my big head out of it. But here's the fun part. Now I'll take the background color and I want you to tint it a bunch meaning put white in it. So actually I'm gonna put more white than the back. I mean, really the majority of it is gonna be white. Not pure white, but very close to it. Okay, and then the highlights on a light bulb usually follow the shape of the glass. See what I mean? So they're following that curve they also kind of, that's the cool thing is you can do whatever you want with the highlights. I like to do one up here. But keep your brush kind of wet and keep smushing it 
so you get more like a razor you know what I mean And it depends on the light source, so. You can do whatever you want. I like to do, but change the, so make it varied, because you see how there's, there's a little one there, there's a little one there, this one's super white, this one's a little more faded, there's a little dot, there's a little piece in there. I like to put just a little random one here and there. But what I'm saying is change the variation. Don't make them all the same value. Do, Let's do a um, mix in more of the background color. So see what I'm saying? This is for my highlights. This is the background color and this is white. And it just do different levels of how bright it is. This one's not gonna show up as much, but that's gonna be one year. To make it realistic, there would be probably more than one light source in a room. You know, you have lamps, you have overhead. And then step back from it. See how it's starting to feel like glass? And we didn't have to paint all that much, but there's, you can also to, to get an idea of what all the different highlights could look like, just Google light bulb. And have fun with it. And I'm gonna, I think we could go in and do some more to the, what are we calling that thing? Anyone have any idea? But this is the hard part. There's some parts of the glass where you can barely see that there's even a line. And to me, that makes it really realistic. And it, and it feels like your brain doesn't want to have no, out, your brain wants to outline everything. Have you noticed that? So it makes some parts that blend right into the background. Oh, I have my camera low. Sorry, people. And you can also put like a little color. There could be a reflection of something going on in the room, like a window or. But have some part, part of it kind of follow the shape of the glass. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun. I hope it wasn't frustrating. If you have questions or comments, um, please put them in the comments below. And please subscribe if you want more. I'm gonna do some more classes. Um, art is the best. Oh, and I think that in the description, we'll have an email address. We would love to see your setup, where you're painting, who you're painting with, and we'd love to see what you painted. Um, oh look, I need to fix that. Sometimes it's hard to stop. But if you start overworking it, step back and um, leave it, a, turn, you know, don't look at it, like leave it in the studio and go watch Big Bang Theory or something. Because we can overwork stuff sometimes. I don't, I don't know if y'all do that, at least I do. Um, but anyway, please subscribe and I hope that was helpful. Have a great day.